Okay, I did it right that time. Uh, so my name is Lucas Stark. I thought that if it wouldn't be too much of a cliche, I'll just start with an old one. Does somebody want to pick a card for me? Do you want to pick a card for me? <laughs> I like you. You're assertive, but I'm going to go here anyway. <laughs> Grab that for me. I'm going to give you this as well. Uh, you can write something on the face of that card on the side with the numbers. Uh, you can draw a little picture. You can write your name. You can write a word. This will take a little while. Giving an art student a marker is a bad idea during a talk. <laughs> do, 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 do. Done? Okay, good. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to try to do this in a way that everyone can see. I will do my best. The way it works is like this. The traditional magic trick, you take a card, you put it back in the deck, then the magician mixes them. Now, most magicians are going to probably keep the card on the bottom. That's not it, though, right? Good. Or on the top, but that's not it either, right? Okay. Oh, your card had the writing on it already. Uh, I think it's about 13 down, right about... Whoa, two. There's one. Ah. The one with the writing on it. Now, I'm going to do this slower, though, so you can actually see the moment it happens, okay? So what you do is you do this. You take the card. You put it back down in the deck like that. That's when it comes back up to the top. Did you see it that time? OK, really slow. Um, push it in. <laughs> that was cooler for just him, but you guys should be able to see this one. Here, we'll get rid of these. So, how does one become a magician? Um, I started doing magic tricks when I was about six or seven years old. I'm not exactly sure when, because I was too young. Um, I started actually performing for other kids' birthday parties by the time I was 13. I realized quickly that other 13-year-olds didn't want to see a 13-year-old magician. They wanted to see adult magicians. And actually, just before I forget this, just would you hold on to that for me? Now, I'm going to trust you. It's like a Christmas present. If you open it ahead of time, it's going to be no fun. All right. Um, so at 13, uh, I was doing other kids' birthday parties. By 16, I was performing professionally in restaurants, going table to table, doing magic up close with people who had not signed up to see a magic show. <laughs> um, so I realized real quickly the worst question you can ask someone is, do you want to see a magic trick? Because the answer is no. Um, people really like magic tricks, but it seems they're not all that fond of magicians. Uh, so the trick was sort of just, I had to develop a thick skin and a big ego. So I would run up to the table, essentially, do something flashy and make them pay attention to me. Um, you also learn a lot. It was the best education you could ask for as a magician, going table to table. You learn uh, how to respond to the things that everyone says, but everyone thinks are really original. Like, can you make my bill disappear? Um, we had a whiteboard in one of the restaurants I worked at. We marked up 201 times that that happened in 60 days. Uh, and I had to respond like that was the first time I had heard it every time. <laughs> I'm not very good at that. Um, the other thing is you get weird stock lines, and I'll go back to that in a little bit. But because of all of that type of performance, I thought to be the flashiest magician was the best magician. And I became this guy. Um, I talked fast. I talked smooth. I had lines for everything everyone could say. And I made a good living doing what I did. But I started kind of hating it. Um, because it seemed really vain and vapid and pointless. And um, I thought that to be a magician was to walk around and pretend that I had a power that no one else had and that I could never show you what I do. I had to make sure that you didn't know that. So I kept performing. I, I managed to get on every Canadian national television network at the time. I was performing across the country. It was great, but I took a break. Um, and while I was away from not just art, but I took a break from everything, and I read as much as I could and talked to as many people as I could, I still performed for friends and things, but I wasn't performing professionally for a whole year. And I came back, and this became my mantra. This is the Interrobang. It was actually an ASCII key. You could type in Alt-1-4 something something. I think it's just three, actually. But, um, and this key would come up, and editors used to use it for statements like, what the? Where it's a question, but it's not really a question. It's kind of an exclamation, but it has what in it. Um, but I figured it was actually probably the perfect description of what it was to be a magician, which was 
It's a combination of both excitement and exclamation and wonder. And I don't think I had captured that second bit, the awe bit, the part that left people going, you know, that was fun. I, what was that about? How did that happen? And to let them actually enjoy the mysterious part because I wanted to show them, boop, 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 look what I could do. Um, let's actually take a look at one of the, for me, I think the three most overused words in the English language. Awesome is one of them. Magic is easily number two, very, very close to number one. Just look at posters for the next week around Toronto, and you will see the word magic misused constantly. And the last one is brother. Um, but when I'm doing college shows, awesome magic bro is about the best comment I can get. So uh, let's look at one of those. This is awe. Uh, it's a word that I, I even use incorrectly constantly. It's, I think that we miss the part of it that involves the slight bit of fear, that excitement part of it. We get the like, it's really good, but we sort of somewhat miss the wonder side of things. And I, I think it's because of the way we differentiate between wonder in children and adults. Um, I love this picture uh, because the kid is essentially underwater. For him, this is the closest he's, he's gotten to being underwater and seeing what it's like under there. And you can see it in his face. It's a combination of, it's almost a reverence. He realized something that he's never even contemplated before, what, the, what life is actually like underneath water. And the woman is doing something that is, is important. She's, she's experiencing it through a child's eyes. But I think we have to remember as adults that we can experience that feeling too. That we don't always have to know everything. That sometimes we can just enjoy the mystery of not knowing something. Um, this is something that... I, I speak about a lot about motivation and, and inspiration for where my bits come from, because people always go, well, where do you learn magic tricks? I am about the biggest physics fanboy you can be without being a physicist. I do not possess the aptitudes required to be a physicist, but if I get in a conversation with a physicist, I am smiling like you would be while you're watching a magic trick. I am just so excited. Um, and the reason being is twofold. First of all, physics can't answer all the questions, and I love that. We're not to all the answers yet. There's still mystery to be enjoyed there. But also, Stephen Feynman, another physicist, actually talks about that moment where you suddenly realize something new. And I feel like I can get that when I sit and read a physics book. But I feel like I can also provide that when I'm doing a magic trick. Um, this magician here is uh, a local magician, which we're very lucky to have. This is David Benn. He runs Magic Canna, which is one of the best magic libraries in the world, and it happens to be located in Toronto. Um, so we're really lucky to have him. Um, he is uh, also a full-time lawyer, um, and his firm used to have him pose as a restaurant magician. Um, so he would act like a restaurant magician when they were interviewing new management clients. Now, new management clients would have been about the same age I was in, this, in the white suit coat picture, and probably very similar in mentality. Um, they, when people get their ego slightly compromised, we respond usually by being more bravado. Um, so what they wanted to see is how someone who was supposed to have all the answers would react to a situation where they couldn't have all the answers. And that was one of the key deciding factors on who they would hire and who they would not hire. They would look at who could enjoy and revel in not understanding a situation when they're supposed to have all the answers. Um, you know what? We're close, but do you think we have time for one more magic trick? I think we should probably do one more magic trick. I'm asking the question I promised I wouldn't ask. Um, can I get somebody, I'm going to pick aisle people because it's faster. Um, do you want to help me? Cool, come on down here for me. Give a round of applause for participating, thank you. And actually, you helped me before, can I get you as well? Cool, and her as well please, if you'd be so kind. The second one is always less exciting. Give her the same thing you gave the first guy at least. Thank you. Uh, actually, do you, want, do you have pockets in those pants? Yeah. Okay, put the, put, I, it's a good thing to know. Um, all right, I'm going to give you guys this book, as well as I have a little stack of post-it notes here. There we go. And a pen. Now, what I'm going to get you to do is, if you'll give him the book, I'm going to stand in front of you guys so that I can't see what's going on. I want you to, um, I'll just take one of these real quick. I'm going to put this on the back of the book for you. What I want you to do is open up the book to any page and select a word that you like or that speaks to you or that has funny spelling. I don't know. 
And when you've got that, close the book for me. And I want you to write that word down on the post-it note. OK. So I'm going to get rid of this and this. All right. You saw the word, too? I want you guys to stand next to each other for me and try not to give each other too much. And actually just, sorry, it's called cheating. There we go, there we go. To them, it looks like you're in a straight line, but to me, I can see both of your faces better this way. Um, now, you could have picked a pa any page you wanted? Okay. Um, did you pick a traditional word? No. I had a feeling about you. Um, <laughs> no, because you saw the word too, right? The word. It had a repetition, right? Yeah? yeah? And a symbol? Yeah. It's a letter and then an ampersand and then a repeat of the letter? Yeah. Was it the letter K? Yeah. Whew, I love it when that one works out. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you guys see the, the slide change behind you? Yeah. Okay, the slide change behind you. Kicker is used for magicians slightly different than it is for, more, for normal people. I think you guys use this word to normal people. This is the rudest thing I've ever said. Uh, sorry. Um, so kicker in general just means a surprise ending. But for magicians, it's one of the actual official stages of a magic trick. Um, you've, you've heard sort of the, if you've seen the prestige, you've heard the names of the terms of a magic trick. Kicker is the fourth step, which doesn't usually get talked about. Um, you have the wallet, right? Um, how many cards are in a deck of cards? Right, and you can come back up here now. I'm sorry, there we are. Um, pull the wallet out. Now in that deck of 52 cards, I, I took another deck that also had 52 cards, and I took one card out, and I folded it up, and I put it inside that wallet. What is the odds of it being the same card? As the card you picked earlier. One in 52, you got it. So open up the wallet, and then just pull down that zipper, Inside that zippered pocket, there should be one card. There you go. And show it to, to him, too, so you guys can both enjoy this together. And if it wouldn't be too rude, I'd like to share my applause with my friends up on stage. Thanks so much for paying attention to me. That's, that's my talk. <laughs>